So you might not expect this, but anyone can propose an emoji to Unicode, really. Anyone mm. who has an idea of something that they feel needs to be represented in emoji form can write effectively a term paper on recognizing its valuable contribution and how it's been an established concept throughout history. We've had high school students, we've had designers, we've had researchers, we've had just like hardcore fans of emoji or hardcore fans of just like one thing, like an accordion or a yo-yo, and they just need to see that on the emoji keyboard. To a certain extent, despite the fact that it's mostly companies that are on the Unicode Technical Committee, emoji really represents the voice of the people. You put together a proposal and you go through and fill out a form that we have available on our site. After you mail it in, it goes to the Unicode Emoji Subcommittee, which meets me. once, sometimes twice a week. And we typically comb through a really long list of emoji proposals that have actually come through. We we'll use a number of different signals to understand its value. One of them is frequency of use. Another is how it'll be used in a communication context, how it plays in terms of the entire emoji inventory. The emoji subcommittee will discuss it, will have questions, they might have suggestions for revisions in terms of the statistics or the description or the name and often, oftentimes the images. It goes back and forth until the proposal is as strong as it can be. It is very rare for an emoji to get through on its first shot. Then the proposal goes to the Unicode Technical Committee, which meets quarterly. They will assess it, and about once a year, this set is filtered down a little bit further and becomes a set of draft candidates. The draft candidates are open for public review, assuming that they all make it a little bit further. Those go into the Unicode data files, and these data files are used by every computer in the world to determine how to use the emoji. When emojis are born, there is usually a big press cycle that says, congratulations, these are the 60 new emojis you'll find on your phone. Largely though, those images aren't what you'll find on your phone because it's up to the different folks who create emojis from Apple or Google or Microsoft to actually articulate them in a visual way. Unicode generally passes 50 to 70 unique emoji characters per year. And that number basically represented a balance between sort of the demand for emoji from the general public and then the ability for the companies to add these emoji into all of their software. Every new emoji that gets added is added permanently because part of what Unicode does is maintain forward and backward compatibility. And it also goes global. So it goes onto every phone, every computer, every device that you can imagine. There's actually a lot of like very complex policy decision making around the behavior of emoji that allowed for things like skin tone and allows for having both male and female and gender neutral, like all the professions, like whether or not you want to be an artist or a teacher or uh, a doctor. And then you have things that like, like for families, like the fact that like a family emoji is not actually a single emoji, it's actually lots of emoji like squished together. You really have to be looking at a great deal more and considering a great deal more in terms of factors when you're supporting something as diverse as emoji.